Well, 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 look who's back home. Little old me, world traveler. Whew, I tell you what, we, uh, we got back day before yesterday, and yesterday I was just bleh, wiped out. Today I'm still a little bit bleh, but I'm getting some, uh, 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 I slept better last night than I have uh, in a while, but we're back with the big world tour. <laughs> and uh, man, what a trip. And I got to meet, what, one, two, three, four, five people, five friends of the channel. It was so great to meet all of you in the pubs and the, uh, uh, the French cafes outside the Eiffel Tower. And I gotta tell you about hiding that Barbasol and how quickly it was found. And then being recognized on the street in London was insane. The first hour I was there, I was like, oh, I was with, there with the kids and the wife, and they were like, ooh, no, they weren't, they didn't care. They still don't care. <laughs> it's just dad. Dads are boring. Anyway, hi, everybody. Uh, it's me, and uh, I just took a shower. I did my hair, and boy, it's getting high. I don't know what's, I need to look into that. I need to get it trimmed again or something. Anyway, so let's shave and let's talk about the trip. I'm feeling a, a bit strung out uh, from from all the uh, lack of sleep, and uh, the sun coming up at 4:45 a.m. was was took me off guard. That was weird. The first morning in London, where it was like, what is going on? I thought it was in a fever dream. Anyway, so let's shave, let's talk, let's chat. I'll show you three things that I'll be uh, talking about coming up soon, and. Uh, i got a little partnership with uh, Leaf Shaving now, and they sent me a new thing that they wanted me to talk about. I'm not going to talk about those things in depth right now because I want to be fully on, sharp, well-rested, and uh, give them their full due, you know? I don't want to just kind of, <laughs> just, just kind of like, you know, halfway. I want to do it all the way. I'll give them the whole 25 cent show. So what are we going to do today? We're going to get some old Sterling Soap Company Black Cherry Glacial. Glacial, yes. Mmm, ice cold. Which it was not in Europe, by the way, when we were there. Oh boy. Come here. There we go. Um, it was beautiful in Normandy. It was like beautiful, cool, but man, after that it started to get hotter and hotter and hotter. It's like 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh my gosh. And you, you guys don't have air conditioning over there. In your trains, in your hotels. Well, the hotels do. But uh, yeah, you're gonna have to look into getting some air conditioning over there before next time I come, if it's gonna be that hot again. <laughs> I, don't, I don't leave Austin uh, to go get hot in Europe. So anyway, all right. So let's lather up. I'm gonna use my Rockwell. I'm gonna use some Cremo. <sighs> I'm just tired, I'm tired folks. And then today I had to mow the yard because it had been two weeks since I did that. So the backyard was like a jungle. Very lush though, very lush. But my goodness, you wanna talk about hot. It's been disgustingly, brutally hot here. 107, 105, 104, 102 every day. Ooh, so whatever that works out into in Fahrenheit, you'd think I have it by now, but I just don't. And uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm uh, unapologetically uh, ignorant when it comes to that. Is there an easy conversion for that or for like kilometers? Because I drove all over Normandy. I drove from Paris. I drove, so there were six of us, right? So it was... Me, my wife, my kids, and my in-laws. And so after London, where I had a wonderful time, I just loved London. I could live in London. My, my son was like, yeah, I could live there. He used to say he wanted to live in Chicago, but I think now he wants to live in London. Anyway, I don't think I could afford it, but I'd love to live there. <laughs> anyway, so that was the easy part. London, oh my gosh, we had a beautiful uh, family reunion because my uh, father-in-law is from England. He's now American. He's uh, officially American. He had to renounce his British citizenship to become an American. But anyway, so we got family over there. My wife does. Rockwell with a feather in it. You know, the routine. And uh, so we had a, a, a wonderful dinner, uh, a, a family reunion. That I think there's about 40 people there. That was very cool. Boy, my hair's doing weird stuff now. It's like collapsing on me. I pushed it down too hard and it popped. And uh, went to Abbey Road, took the youngest son, crossed Abbey Road a few times, watched all the <laughs> the annoying, weird people that go to Abbey Road. And, you know, in the Abbey Road album cover, the Beatles are just walking, right? So their arms are just like normally swinging by their sides. When people go to Abbey Road, they stop and they put their arms out like this. I'm like, what are you doing? <sighs> anyway, so uh, that was cool. So then we took the, I'd never been to France before. 
never been to Germany before. Now I have. Uh, we took the uh, train from London to Paris. And that took about two hours on a very fast train. It's not, I don't think it's Le Train Grand Vitesse. I don't think it's called that anymore. Or I think that's a maglev train, but I don't know. I could be wrong. Always know that you could be wrong, and it's okay to admit it. So then we had to pick up this, uh, as you saw, I showed you in the, uh, the Normandy live stream. You want to go back and watch that with the cows and the, actually the horse, that black horse, Maurice Chevalier. Um, we had this big, uh, like, six, eight passenger, whatever it was. There were six of us. Uh, Mercedes big black van thing, you know, just a rental. And uh, I had to drive through the streets of Paris in that sucker. And I think I probably talked about this in the live stream, but oh my God, that is a trial by fire. It's a crucible. But as soon as you get out of Paris, it was a lot easier. And I found that driving on the highways in France was, was very pleasant. And people, like over here in the States, the left lane, if it's a two-lane highway going the way you're going, left lane is for supposedly passing only, but people just park out in the passing lane and it goes as fast as they can and, and honk at you if you're anywhere uh, near the speed limit. But not in Europe, or at least not in France. Uh, everyone pretty much goes the speed limit. I didn't see too many crazy speeders, but they're in the right lane. If they want to pass, they go around and they cut right back in, sometimes a little too close. Like, hey, gosh. But I had to start getting used to, you know, driving 90 kilometers per hour, 110, 130. And the other thing is that the big trucks have to stay in that right lane. And the, I don't think they can go more than 90 kilometers per hour. So they're going slower and kind of, so it was nice, very pleasant, beautiful. And I loved all the, uh, on the way from Paris to Normandy. Ooh, Whew. this stuff is glacial. It feels good. Black cherry scent and smell, sterling soaps. West Coast shaving brush and Rockwell. It's good to be home, folks. Good to be home. You start getting a little homesick after two weeks. Anyway, the, it was cool when you'd go past a little town, there would be a big picture of what the town was famous for. Whether it was like an industry like Calvados, you know, the apple brandy, uh, or like a, or an abbey or the ruins of a church or something. It was like, oh, here's what this town is famous for. I thought that was cool. And uh, so I drove, I think it was a three and a half hour drive to our first Airbnb, which was near Mont Saint-Michel. If you've never been to Mont Saint-Michel, oh my gosh, that place is insane. Just look it up, G Google it, Mont, M-O-N-T, Mont Saint-Michel. Um, just, just a, get there early, by the way, because it gets crowded and then it kind of gets ruined. But get there early and it's kind of quiet and they're starting to open all the shops and it's, get a cup of coffee and you walk up this ancient, ancient street. I mean, it, oh, beautiful. That was beautiful. The next day we went to... Uh, Bayeux, I think it's pronounced Bayeux, also in Normandy. I think that was an hour drive, so three and a half, and then I had another hour, then like another hour, hour and a half to Cannes, C-A-E-N, Cun. I, it's hard for me to pronounce that in French, even though I can pronounce French fairly well, right, French friends? Uh, mes amis? Um, anyway, so I was driving a lot, and then, you know, eventually three and a half hours to, uh, or like an, two hours to Rouen, and then like a, it was like a four hour, oh, I did a lot of driving. I drove all over France, folks. Uh, but we did the Normandy thing. Uh, we went to uh, the World War II Museum. And then we went to, you know, the most moving thing, the, the American Cemetery at Omaha Beach. And just row upon row upon row upon row of crosses and stars of David. And you know what I'm talking about. Unbelievably moving. Unbelievably beautiful. I knew it would be. It was one of those places... I always wanted to go. I never imagined I would. And uh, that's how life works sometimes, folks. Don't ever think that you're not going to get to do the thing that you always dreamt of doing. Because you just might. You just might. I, I never imagined I'd get to do that. And it was extremely moving. Very special. And then we drove down to Omaha Beach itself. The D-Day Beach. You know, one of the main D-Day Beach. The worst uh, fighting took place on Omaha Beach. Because they didn't knock out the German emplacements when they did the bombing runs prior to D-Day landing. And, uh, you know, you're just trying to imagine what happened there. And the men that died there, I mean, thousands, just, just 
everything was incredibly moving. A lot of history in this trip. And uh, what I realized and what I kept saying towards the end was like, everything in Europe is a thousand years old. Everything I see is a thousand. This was built in 1032, you know. Mont Saint-Michel, I think, is having its thousand, thousand, thousandth anniversary, 1023 to 2023. So anyway, did that. And the kids, after, after being on the beaches, and you kind of stop thinking about what happened there, you know, the, the awful, deadly, but necessary stuff that happened there. You just enjoy it as a beach. It's a gorgeous beach. Gorgeous, big, wide beach. And uh, I know I talked about some of this in the live stream, but a lot of people don't watch the live streams, right? I don't watch everybody's live streams. I was like, oh, I can go back and watch three hours worth of <laughs> whatever. But it was a beautiful beach, so that was great. And then went back to Paris for a couple of nights and uh, gosh, an explosion uh, there, gas explosion a couple of days ago. Actually, it was about a 15 minute walk from where we stayed. So if we'd still been there, we might've heard it and hopefully not been anywhere near it. Hopefully we were being a toilet too, like that one guy who, who, uh, who witnessed it. But anyway, they were calling him toilet witness. Anyway, it's in the news right now. If you're watching this five years from now, you're not even gonna remember. So I went to Paris, did all the Paris stuff. I absolutely love the cafe culture. Everyone's sitting out, having their wine or their beer or coffee or whatever. Tons of people smoking cigarettes. Tons of people. Like, it was like, oh, I guess they all just smoke cigarettes still. Young people, uh, you know, saw some of the most beautiful men and women walking around with each other and dressed stylishly. It, Paris is a little insane, though. There's a lot of people that live there. and The traffic is cuckoo, cuckoo crazy especially driving in it. Um, but yes, I love that stuff. Uh, the history, the beauty, oh, just, just incredible. After that, where'd we go? Oh, went to Salzburg. Oh, my. Can I tell you, I have fallen in love with Salzburg, Austria. I love that place. Love it. It's, it's like the most European, European city I've ever been to. If you watch Rick Steves, like I do, he's a travel guy on uh, PBS here, public broadcasting. And he goes to those places like, I want to go there. And I, that's what I felt like. I felt like he was going to walk around the corner. Absolutely beautiful. Loved it. Had a great time. Stayed at a little hotel. Went to Old Town. My wife saw the Sound of Music stuff. Uh, and then we took, we had a tour guide. We hired a tour guide. And he took us up to um, the Ober Salzburg and Berchtesgaden and the Eagle's Nest. Have you ever heard of the Eagle's Nest? It was built for uh, old, uh, you know, that old guy that invented World War II. It was for his 50th birthday. Uh, one of his cronies decided to, you know, lick his boots and say, Oh, look what I did for you. Sorry, that's a terrible accent. <laughs> I shouldn't do that. Um, anyway, it's up on a mountain. It's a little tea house. Now it's a restaurant up there. They didn't bomb it. They bombed everything else around there, but it wasn't strategically important. So it's still there. And now people have been visiting it since, you know, the war. And it's just breathtaking. You go up in this gold elevator that was original to the times in 1936, I believe it was uh, uh, made, built. Just an engineering feat. And up in the Bavarian Alps and you're just looking around, you can see Austria on one side and Germany on the other. Incredible. Uh, and then we went, so we were on top of the mountain, and then about two hours later, we were underneath the mountain in a salt mine there, uh, near Berchtesgaden, and it got a little dicey, like, if you're claustrophobic, do not go, do not go, because it wasn't like one of those salt mines you see, I think, in Poland, where there's these huge open caverns, and they've carved, no, it's just tiny little tunnels, <laughs> so I got a little freaked out, uh, I'm not scared of, uh, I'm not claustrophobic, but I was like, oh boy, I am 210 meters underneath this dang mountain, and uh, it's slowly, every year, it's slowly coming down, about half inch or an inch, and they have to hire and keep on staff 40 full-time miners to continually dig this thing out. But here's the crazy thing about this salt mine. It's been a tourist attraction for 400 years. They've been going there since the 1600s. Tourists, just like me. It's like, what? So guys in like the Baroque period of Salzburg, you know, the Mozart times of the 1700s are going down in this dang mine dressed in their frilly little, uh, you know, satin uh, outfits or whatever the heck they wore. That was crazy to me. Beautiful. Incredible. Love Salzburg. I want to go back. I want to go back in, in uh, wintertime and see all the Christmas stuff. Oh my gosh. Anyway, and then we went to Munich for the final thing because, was that the final thing? 
Munich? Yes. Went to Munich because that was the nearest major airport to fly back. So we only got to spend uh, like a one full day. I think it was two nights in two different hotels. The second night we were in the Munich Airport Hotel. Incredible airport there in Munich. I love it. Just beautiful. Beautiful airport. Munich itself was just too hot. Oh my gosh. I was walking back from taking like a history walk. We went to the, the Hofbrau. Um, uh, you know, the old, that old, uh, uh, the place where Oktoberfest is every year, the giant place, you know, drinking those giant steins. And, uh, so I walked back from those, that area and it was like hot, hot, hot. I was like, Oh my God, I'm dying. <laughs> but anyway, I'm all done by the way. Let me just wash this out while we continue to talk. But so much history, so much World War II history, Beatles history in London. Uh, my wife with the sound of music stuff. Uh, walking in the footsteps of, you know, of history is, that's why I love it. That's why I love uh, uh, non-fiction books, history, documentaries, because I get to visit the places where these things took place. Crazy, right? That's why I love that kind of stuff. All right, let me wash my face off. Oh, boy. I'll tell you, talking to you has kind of upped my, uh, my, 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 my feelings, as, they all, as it always does. Get in the chat with y'all. And I hope you're... Uh, Glad to see the old, the friendly confines of the Sinatra Lennon bathroom. It's a little later coming out today because I had a lot of work to do today. I had to mow the yard and all that jazz, and then I had to rearrange my little man corner. With all my little Star Wars toys and action figures and helmets and all that goofy stuff. I'll say that someday. I'm, pr I'm a proud Star Wars nerd. Yeah. Anyway, unbelievable trip. Two weeks is a bit much, I think, but you know what? For six people... Uh, and in-laws that are in their 80s, we did pretty dang well. Pretty dang well. The kids didn't, you know, didn't get too out of line. There was, you know, slight sniping as there always is traveling with any amount of people. You could travel by yourself and you'd somehow find yourself arguing over what you're going to do next. But it was an unbelievable once-in-a-lifetime journey, I'm sure. I'm so glad I got to meet you. Oh, yes, in France. Remember, um... I shaved in front of the Eiffel Tower and I said, okay, I'm going to bury this barbasol right here within like 20 minutes. <laughs> Friend of the channel, G, I won't say his name because he said, yeah. And when I took pictures with the, the, with the people I met, they said, don't post them online. I was like, no problem. I don't, I don't blame you. Um, he found it within like, you know, half an hour. And we just happened to still be at a little cafe right next to the Eiffel Tower. By the way, the cafes next to the Eiffel Tower, you know, they upcharge, like you can get a drink, you know, a drink would be like 15 euros instead of like six euros, you know, down the block. So watch out for that. I'm not becoming a travel channel uh, guy, so don't worry. But anyway, so G showed, I said, hey, I saw you was on Instagram. You took a picture, you, uh, you know, he was holding it. I was like, well, if you're still around, we're here if you want to come uh, say hi. And he did. He dropped by. That was very cool. Great to see you. Great to meet you. And uh, I hope to get to meet more of you. I don't know. We'll see. I didn't meet anybody in Germany or Austria, just in France and England. So that, hey, you know, two out of four ain't bad. <laughs> I'm batting 500, folks. Oh, all right. Oh, yeah, I use Cremo. I need to put some more stuff in my hair. Can I show you the thing that I use in my hair? I actually stole this from my, my wife's uh, cousin's uh, uh, son. I'm sorry, Jim. I stole this from you. I didn't have hair stuff. It looked like you were almost done with it. You don't live there anymore. And uh, so, yeah, I can't get this in the States, but... Yeah, it's pretty good. Here's what you do. You just get a little bit, <laughs> get it on your finger, smear it around, put it up in there, and you're done. There we go. It's pretty good. I need to get some of that. It's like hair mud. You can buy that kind of stuff anywhere. It's not this brand. But any hoozles, uh, next time I'll tell you about how my kids and I got kicked out of the hotel pool in Munich because... We were up to no good, I guess, according to the uh, the young lady behind the counter who handled the towels and the smoothies. Ooh, she didn't like us. And I tell you what, by that time, I was so annoyed that uh, I may have given her a little attitude. I, not directly, not directly. I was just kind of walking out like, what are you talking about? What happened? We didn't do anything. Uh, I feel kind of bad. I feel kind of bad. Kind of. Anyway, all right. Oh, here's the things I'm going to come up with in the next few weeks. Something called My Blades. Recycled blades. Leaf Razor's got a shower holder. And Pearl sent me this, the Pearl Flexi, a new version of the Flexi. Open comb. All right, there's, there's a sneak preview of all the things coming up. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. And thanks for, uh, for coming out and taking the time to meet me at those pubs and uh, cafes and uh, all that stuff. Just remarkable. I'm a lucky guy. I'm a lucky guy, and I thank you all 
for uh, being part of that good luck. All right, everyone. I'm going to go uh, lay down or collapse or do something. But I'll tell you what, I, I ate some nachos when I got home. And now I'm recharging my Tex-Mex batteries. Okay, everyone. I'll see you soon. Bye.